We actually use it for a training film now at Paul's Hauling in Winnipeg. Daryl Inkster Paul's lives just outside of Dauphin, Manitoba, and works as a contractor doing jobs ranging from sandblasting and welding to building that pole sheds. But right now, he and his wife Kathy are warming up inside their salvage school bus before heading out to cut and split some firewood. Daryl took out the bus seats and put in a wood stove so they can take it out to wherever they happen to be working. Once they finish their coffee, they just step outside the bus to Daryl's home-built wood splitter. Been basically a bushman all my life when it comes down to it, and we've brought out a lot of wood that's questionable sometimes and you're forever sharpening chainsaws and wearing chains out because of dirty wood and stuff and and I thought well I, I can probably build something like this I saw one before. Inkster built his own wood splitter with the same features he liked from other units and also came up with a few unique ideas on his own. As is the case with most of the unit he designed the cutting system mainly out of salvaged materials. Well, the blade itself is, is a caterpillar cutting edge. Uh, I believe it's off a, a big dozer blade. It was dead stock. I picked it up at a, at a cat dealer for next to nothing. And then I uh, sharpened my own edge on it with a grinder. It took me a whole day of grinding to get that, like a razor. It was very hard stuff to grind. It's one inch thick, and uh, I believe it's 20 inches wide which gives me about an 18-inch throat in between, and uh, seems to work pretty good. One of Inkster's main goals was to cut and split wood in one pass and only handle the wood once, which he accomplished with his unique design. It's a BR-100 steel, I think it's called. It's a very hard steel. It's, it's like the same stuff they use in a grater blade almost. And I cut the whole frame that, that runs as a guide out of that stuff as well, so it can't flex or bend. And uh, that, that uh, splitting axe splits the wood open as the shear is cutting through, so you're getting two operations at once. And uh, it takes about 15, 20 seconds for a cycle, depending on how big a wood you're running through it. So it's actually, it, it's pretty quick compared to other ways because you only have the one process instead of cutting once and then splitting once. Inkster has found that this one pass system allows them to burn green wood within two or three weeks of cutting and splitting it. That shear blade as it's going through that wood just shatters the end all up and it makes the wood dry twice as fast as a normal uh, saw blade or, and a splitting outfit would. It shatters the end right up and the air can get into the fibers. He runs the hydraulic system with his 706 International tractor. The hydraulic cylinder came off an old drilling rig and has a six inch bore with a 30 inch stroke. And I think it puts out around 45 tons of pressure or so. I'm only running it at 1500 PSI. I could crank it up some, but I've, I've run it at that uh, pressure so that it's not quite as dangerous for hoses exploding and stuff like that. One of the biggest challenges in designing this system was coming up with an effective way to guide the blade up and down. Well, that was an experiment. I, I originally started out with roller bearings and uh, after running about 40 cords of wood through it, I found that they were shattering because of the pressure. So I replaced most of them, most of them with just a round, heavy piece of bushing stock on a bolt. So it's basically just a friction that just rides up and down these heavy steel bars on the side and I grease them well. Inkster also made use of hydraulics to feed the logs into his one pass cutting system made with salvage combine feeder chains from a local John Deere dealer. And I got all the shafts and sprockets along with them that were worn so that's what I used. I cut them down, I, cu I cut them into uh, almost half the width they normally are and then re-welded the bars together so it would track properly. And all I had to do was buy new pillow block bearings for the ends. And then I rigged up a orbit motor on the other side with a, a, I think it's number 70 chain, and a sprocket that drives everything ahead or back. The frame of the feeding system was built mainly out of a big I-beam salvage from an old bridge near Dauphin. The arch, which holds the one-pass cutting system, was reject steel purchased at a discount from a local machine shop. 
The steel had already been bent, so Inkster basically just had to weld it all together. He says this wood splitter is not only efficient, it's also environmentally friendly. You can run dirty wood through it, which we encounter quite often when you're skidding in wet conditions or stuff, you know. A lot of this wood normally would be just left in the bush, but because I don't have to worry about dulling chains or blades, I bring everything home and we, we get a lot of wood just out of the tops and branches that normally would have been wasted. Inkster says they go through about 20 cords of wood per year heating their house and shop with a home-built outdoor boiler, plus any surplus wood is sold locally. Since many of the components in the wood splitter were salvaged, he figures the total material cost was only somewhere between $500 and $1,000, which is a very good investment.